Good morning. It's not actually Sunday. It is th 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 Wednesday morning and um, I'm working this afternoon, but I'm up here this morning because normally I work Wednesday mornings, but the sunshine is out. It's a gorgeous morning and it's supposed to rain this afternoon. So I thought I would, you know, swap it round for the better weather. A lot of what I'm recording is going to be silent because um, I'm just doing this in the very brief moment that the guy next door has put his chainsaw down. So it's not relaxing up here at all this morning, but I've got a new hat, which is all shades of spectacular. It was made for me by my friend Sarah, which is just a complete joy. I love it. Um, yeah. What I'm going to do first thing is under the covered bed. Hang on, I'm just going to put you down because you're pretty heavy. That's not very stable. Okay, so it, under the covered bed, we had some turnips growing um, and we picked, oh God, it must've been about 10 turnips, um, quite the early beginning of the season that would kind of swollen up really nicely, but a lot of them never kind of did anything and we just let them go. And now they have sprouted and we're gonna eat them like rapini, which is like a big version of the chimney wrapper that we were growing so which is really just sprouting turnips and that's what we've got there so I'm going to uncover the whole bed pull up all of the turnips or at least half of them it might be too many actually in one picking so I might just pull up half so I'll see how many I'm going to pull up anyway but they've all got beautiful big sprouting tops on them which I'm going to pick off I'm also going to pick some chicory that's in there I'm gonna have that for dinner because oof, that's delicious mm -mm -mm. yeah anyway let me show you um the covered bed because we did get some really good turnips off there. And I reckon when I pull them out, um, there is actually gonna be, oh, um, I have to jam myself in here. Um, knocked everything off. Uh, yeah, I do reckon when we pull them out, um, because they'd got so big, it was really difficult to see um, what had turnips on the bottom and what didn't, because they just turned into like a hedge. So I reckon when I pull them out, there are gonna be some decent turnips under there, but not a huge number. But we're going to eat the tops of them anyway so it doesn't really matter does it anyway let me show you so these are the massive turnip tops but have a listen to this that's what we're dealing with today holy moly this is the uh chicory that we've been eating dandelion leaf chicory it's absolutely delicious i'll talk more about that another time but this is the turnip tops that we're going for today and they've been covered by the polytunnel bed that we've had this year and this mesh, I get asked about this mesh all the time. And I've got to be honest, we didn't actually buy this mesh. We picked it up at a factory that was closing down about 15 years ago. It's not cheap. It's steel grid mesh or cattle mesh, I think it's sometimes called. I'll put a link underneath to where you can buy it from and what it actually is in case you're looking for it. It's not cheap, but having said that, we've made the fruit cage out of them, we've made the chicken house out of them, and we use them constantly on all the beds, and they are in just as good and usable condition 15 years later as they were when we bought them. So, yeah. So this was a potato bed last year, can you tell? <laughs> okay, that's all of them out. I'm gonna go and uh, see what I can do with them now.
Right, so I am going to just sort through these. There are actually some pretty good turnips in there. But I decided to take the whole lot because, well, we've decided we're going to use that space because it's under the covered bed. We're going to use it as a nursery bed. So we're going to get some things started in there, which will then transfer out. So yeah, we're going to use the space. So I've taken them all and we'll see what we get at the end of it. So this is actually a really good example of kind of when you sow in groups rather than individuals. So generally, if you're growing in groups, you don't wait for the, uh, the I don't know, the beetroot, or in this case, the turnip to get massive. You pick them when they're a bit younger, but because you've got more in a space, you're getting more anyway for the space, if you kind of see what I mean. But this is a good example. So I'm having to bend down here. <laughs> Sorry if I look like I'm squatting. Um, so this is, I've pulled this out. You've got this one, which, I mean, obviously these are bolted, so ignore it, but this one would then be ready to pick and you twist that one off, get rid of that. And then it would give this one, which is currently the subordinate. So this is the dominant turnip and this is the subordinate turnip. And then after I'd picked that one, this one would then suddenly find itself with the space and it would fatten up. And if you had three, maybe four of them, it would go in kind of a sequential order, which ends up meaning that you get four, smallish turnips or four medium sized turnips out of the space where you would have got one large turnip and you also get them over a longer period of time rather than the seedling goes in the ground you wait for the turnip to be ready it gets big and then you pick the turnip and that what's you that's what you've got you end up with like a good two months worth of turnip from the same spot if you see what i mean anyway i'm just going to get on with um picking the tops of these they actually look really good look And because these have been grown in that really soft environment, these are just so tender. It's gonna be wonderful. Mm -mm -mm. get on with sowing some radish in that gap where I've just taken those turnips out of. Got a whole load of different radish. Got a whole load of different radish. Um, Mum's favourite ones are these ones which are called, I've handily ripped the label off there, oh Albina. They're just the white round ones. She particularly likes those ones and they did seem to be the nicest ones when roasted. They were really really tasty. I'm also doing some cherry bell which is just a completely red round one and some flamboyant three which are kind of french breakfast style you know with the white tips i'm going to do some mooly which are also called daikon but they're like these really long long radishes and they're really tasty we had last year they were a disaster um they were just gnarly and horrible and they all bolted really fast but the year before they were so good and they make the best pickled radishes ever so i'm gonna have another go at them and i'm just gonna put them in that gap so radishes are really quick anyway obviously they're like one of those fastest crops and the really good ones to get kids to grow because they don't get bored in between and forget about them but <laughs> but they're um they're probably going to be even faster because i'm putting them in that covered bed so yeah but gonna do that
So this is basically a giant dandelion and we're going to be having it for dinner, so. So although I've just sown some radishes in here today, this space that we've got in the middle of this covered bed, I'm going to sow some really thick spring onions in here. The spring onions won't be thick, they'll be thickly sown. And um, we'll, uh, I'll just like, lay them in there and then they'll get a really fast start because it's so lovely and warm in there. And then when they're ready to come up, when they're kind of about five inches tall, I'll turf the whole lot out and go and plant them in the alley and bed, which is going to be further up this year. But it just give them a really good head start. So I'm using it as a nursery bed, basically. And once we've got this cover back on here, the guy who was doing the chainsawing has actually stopped doing the chainsawing, which is incredibly exciting. But he's also thrown a couple of massive logs over the fence for us. So um, because we've got a wood burner at home, we tend to kind of scavenge for logs all the time. And these are obviously really fresh, but the tree was dead that they were taking down. So it's not gonna need like three years, but probably we'll leave it for a year, but they are really big logs. So we're gonna do a bit of teamwork to um, get them down the end of the allotment. What a magnificent day. Unfortunately, it's lunchtime and I have to go back to work. Cue sad face. Yeah. At least I am working from home today, so um, I'm not gonna sit in the garden. Yeah, it's all right. Has anyone else noticed that the apple trees are flowering like crazy this year? I mean, this is nuts. I hope that means good things for the apples. Saturday morning, I've done the plot tour, which is scheduled to come out this afternoon. Uh, I'm on fire this morning. The sky is so blue and yeah, so we are up here. We've got a cricket match going on just on that side. So if you're hearing like, oh, that's what's going on. So I'm going to do some direct sewing this morning. I have got three types of, what's it called? Rocket. Um, I've got broadleaf, spindly leaf, and somewhere between with a red vein. Can you see that one in there? Called dragon's tongue nice absolutely love rocket so i'm going to get a couple of rows of that in today i'm also going to sew the second sewing of the carrots and these are going to be touchon now touchon is basically the best carrot in the world and then i'm doing an old french variety which is i think this is the yellow one yeah this one is a yellow one old french yellow carrot and i'm really looking forward to that guy up there grew it last year and said it was that like, top notch so having a go at that one but the Touchon um, is just just the best carrot in the world so we'll see how it compares to that anyway I've already got the early Nantes in there was it early Nantes or was it not I can't remember whether it was Amsterdam forcing three anyway I've already got two rows of carrots in there they're all up they're about this big I'll show you um, or you will have seen them on the plot tour if you're watching the plot tour Right, what else am I doing? I've got some spinach to direct sow. Um, proper spinach, not charred spinach. Um, Mediana and Manopa. I also have... Hold on one second. Loads of things. I have got saved calendula seed. 
that's going in next to the where the arches are along the edge. I'm going to plant my tastefully coloured nasturtiums in a pot in the greenhouse. Mum's pride and joy. Hang on, I think we might be a bit, a bit bright there. There we go. So mum's absolute pride and joy, which was last year's Rebecca, uh, it is a perennial and if you have a really mild winter it does come back but obviously what we have not had is a mild winter and it's all gone. So she's going to sow some more of those today but I've just been up where the sweet peas are or where I'm going to be putting the sweet peas in today and it looks like it might have self-seeded because there's a weed a weed, a self-seeded something has come up kind of behind where the Rebecca were last year. They've got quite distinctive leaves, Rebecca. They're like hairy and so look a little bit like maybe borage or um, green alkanet, that sort of hairy leaf. But they don't have as many veins on them as those two and my goodness do they look like Rebecca seedlings. So I'm just going to dig them out and plant them along the edge. If they turn out to be a weed or whatever, that's fine, I'll just take them out again, but I think they might be. So I'm gonna move them over. We've got those. Mum is gonna direct sow some sunflowers today. We've got black ball cornflowers to go in. And there was something else, definitely was something else. Oh, here we go. There's another pile. Yeah, right. We've got quite a lot to do today, but have a look at how beautiful it is outside. It's just blue, blue, blue. A little bit windy, but, but the breeze isn't cold. So tick all round. Kidoki carrot bed. Just looking at the label, they are Amsterdam forcing. So that's two rows of those coming up. I've also got this chap in here, which is the last of a calabrese that's gonna have to come out. Mum is uh, busy digging dandelions out of her paths. I'm going to take the brassica butterfly netting off here even though the tree cabbages are going to be staying at that end i'm going to rig something else up for them up until now obviously those little tiny carrots have just been seedlings and they've only just sort of started to come through so i'm going to move the carrot box off where it's just been being stored on the spinach and i'm going to move it down here so i need to get rid of this netting So this is the carrot root fly box. It is just a wooden frame covered in EnviroMesh, which stops the carrot root fly getting in. Um, it's just been resting on the spinach, like I said, for no other reason than to keep the birds off. So uh, a bit of overkill, really. 
it's much better down here on my carrots. Can you see me now? Yes. Uh, I'm onto the rocket. I've got two ends of the beds. I'm going to put them in. I've pre-watered them because they were really dry as a bone. Uh, yeah. I've got a kohlrabi. No, not a kohlrabi. I've got a celeriac to take out of one of them. I'm just going to go and label those before I forget where I've sewn them. And the next thing on my list for this afternoon is pretty exciting and involves strawberries. So last year I was bemoaning the fact that my strawberries were being eaten by the mice. And over on ye old Instagram, a girl called Kim contacted me and said she's been collecting fishing rope washed up on the beaches in Orkney and making basket hangers from them. And lo and behold, here are three. So there's two small ones and one larger one and I found these two pots fit the smaller ones perfectly and I haven't quite found one for the big one yet. But I'm just going to fill them with a mixture of peat-free potting compost and vermiculite. I mix that half and half with our own sieved compost from the compost bin. So that's this lovely, beautifully sieved by mum so it's got no massive lumps in it. I'm going to put three strawberries in each of these. The strawberry plants I'm putting in are really quite tiny because they are the runners from the ones that I removed from the fruit cage last year. So I'm going to give that a good mix and then plonk them in and then go and hang them up in their new home. I'm pretty excited about this. Like, hold on, there's a right kerfuffle going on in the bush in front of me. There are robins popping out of this all over the show. Ah, uh, yeah, and they are uh, making baby robins as well. There must be about six of them in there. It's just they're all shouting at each other. <laughs> Probably should have given them some privacy rather than like quick turn the camera around on them, shouldn't I? that's going to work so well they're like right at the right height for picking they've got loads of room to grow round the fishing rope this one's going to have a big one in it obviously but i haven't found the pot for that yet and it's going to be amazing and there's just loads and loads of room underneath so like all of this area where i'm planting the fruit bushes is not going to interfere with that it's perfect well while that excitement's been going on uh, mum is patiently fishing blanket weed out of the pond we do this a lot we do have blanket weed in there obviously as you can see but 
We don't want to put anything in there that might kill it because we've got so much living in this pond. It would be sacrilege to put any chemical or anything in there. So it's just a manual job and neither of us really mind it. Every time we walk past, we just kind of fish a bit out, leave it on the side for anything to crawl back in again. The girls are still out. Oh, you can see me and my gimbal. <laughs> you having a lovely day, girls? Are you having a lovely day? Yeah, I think so. What are you doing? Oh, beautiful girls. So, what a magnificent day. Yeah, what a beautiful day. Everything's really starting to look like spring now, isn't it? It looks lush. It's that kind of green you get at this time of year is so intense. It's gorgeous. Robins are still shouting. I think they were fighting over a nest that was in that, um, in that honeysuckle. Well, it's 5.30. We've been up here a long time today. Look, 5.30, the sun's still out. Absolute heaven. <laughs> it's absolute heaven. I've done so much sewing in the last, like, two hours. I've done calendula, nasturtiums, basil, Thai basil. I've put the gladioli bulbs in. I've moved a load of Rebecca seedlings. I've planted the sweet peas and it feels fantastic. I've been feeling a bit fretful about being behind and now I just feel like we're back on track. Tomorrow, which I've said before is normally like Sunday is normally my day to like get stuff done up here, but um, we're gonna kind of have a bit of a social. I mean, not social. I mean, it's just my sister coming over, but we're gonna be sort of just sitting around and I won't be doing any filming. So um, yeah, I had to do the filming today and I do not regret it because it's been wonderful. Oh, you're aching my arm. Oof. Um, yeah, so we're gonna head home now because it's time for a glass of wine and hopefully there's gonna be a little bit of sunshine in the back garden. Well, what a fantastic couple of days. We've got so much done and the sun was out. It's just beautiful. It really feels like we're here, we're in spring. Even though the nights are still really cold at the moment, we're definitely there, aren't we? Mm. And cheers. Tomorrow, when I see Johanna up at the allotment, um, I like the way I'm thinking like this is a proper social occasion, like even though it's just Johanna coming over. So, that is a lockdown massive occasion. It may as well be a festival, I suppose. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so tomorrow, quite exciting, not just because of the social occasion, but because, um, which is a rare thing, obviously over the last year, um, Johanna is bringing a load of her chilies, aubergines, peppers and stuff and tomatoes for me and I'm going to be giving um, the ones that I grew for her over so that's exciting so she's got a couple of aubergines for me because um, I fried a couple of my aubergines yeah they got really cold one night downstairs in the conservatory so I brought them up to my bedroom and they were tucked behind a curtain to stop them feeling the draft and they just the sun and the curtain they just basically I put them in an oven basically I put my aubergines in an oven so I lost three when I did that and unfortunately the three that went were all viserba do you remember I was doing one that I'd never done before it's like a really long skinny one viserba well I lost all of them and it's too late to re-sew so that's a real pest but Johanna has got a black ball for me and another one that I don't know, but her aubergines look incredible. So uh, yeah, I'm really pretty chuffed about that. So that's really nice of her. And also she's got me a mamande aroma, a tumbling one, you know, to grow in a hanging basket. Um, oh, actually I could possibly put that one in the basket that's gonna go between the two strawberries in the fruit cage. Yeah, anyway, she's got a load of things. I'm not entirely sure what she's got. We've discussed it so many times on the phone, you know, when you're just like listing varieties and then you can't really remember what either of you have said. Basically, there's some tomatoes, peppers and chilies coming tomorrow and an aubergine. Very exciting. Mm. Other than that, that's about it this week, guys. 
know, I'm really not feeling this going to work thing, you know? Like, the sun is out, it's spring, I've got other stuff to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I know. That was one thing about the lockdown, wasn't it? Like, just as spring hit, it was, that was it. That was all we were doing for a year, or all I was doing for a year. I shouldn't generalise. Like, other people had a really hard time, I know that. But yeah, that's all I was doing. God, I never thought I would be reminiscing fondly about anything to do with COVID, but yeah. Yep. Anyway, chaps, um, lovely to see you. Uh, I'm cheersing you properly this time, so massive cheers if you enjoyed it give me the thumbs up and if you haven't already think about subscribing and i will see you on saturday and then i'll see you again this time next week